is go to lists dot doc inside short assignment P open it up there's what could be a Python script is going to turn into a Python script but right now it's just a bunch of comments crank up idle do a file new save that call it for loops April 20 or something like that or yeah I'm going to call it, nah, I don't even know what I'm going to call it. April 20, that's all I'm going to call it, dot .py. All right. Make a list named movies. Make it a list of four or five movies you like or hate or whatever. Okay, how do we make a list? You have to declare a variable name. Well, I give you the variable name right there, movies. And then what comes after that? We've done a few lists in here already. I haven't given you, you any homework as far as I recall that use lists though. So, what follows the variable name when we're making a list? No one's watching or no one knows, and I know that half of y'all know. We use an equal sign, right? And then what follows the equal sign when we're making a list? Square braces. Now, if you're going to make an empty list, that's enough. But let's actually make it a list of movies. All right, Age of Ultron. Since this is a list of strings, we have to enclose the strings in quotes, but then outside of the quotes go our commas. What's another movie we all know and love? Somebody name a movie. My mind's gone blank. Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. What'd you say? Maybe. <laughs> That's funny. Jurassic World. What was that? Batman versus Superman movie. I've gotten bad reviews of that by my friends. But anyways, okay, there's four movies. I'm putting the spaces in there to make it easier to see, you know, where the quotes are and where the spaces are, but now I'm going to take them out because otherwise I can't get that entire line to fit on the screen. All right, at every single step along the way, as soon as we type in a line, we're going to run it to make sure it works. This doesn't do anything. It just declares a variable, so we're not going to see any output. But that's okay, because if we don't get an error, it's good. If we do get an error, we need to fix it right then and there before we go on. Okay, didn't print anything, but that's cool. There's no print statements in the program. All right, print the, li the list with a print statement. That's pretty easy. We just use print and we pass it the list just like it was any other data so we give it the name of the list now I'm gonna run that there we go I printed my four movies Who's getting syntax errors at this point that they need help with? Nobody? It's okay if you're getting them. We'll fix them. Print the elements with a for loop. So when do you use a for loop? When you have a list of data or a range of data or a file to process. You use a while loop when you're going to repeat until some condition is not true. And I had somebody say, no, I don't even remember the question that I could word it accurately. But that's the difference between the two. If you have a, a list of data, or a file full of data, or if you have a range of data, you use a for loop. So to print these out, item by item, we're going to use a for loop. The syntax of it is for, now don't type this, variable name in list. That's the syntax of it. You replace variable name with some temporary variable that's going to hold the values out of the list. So I'm going to call it M for movie. 
and then we replace that word list with the actual variable that contains the list. And you put a colon there because we're going to indent some code after that. Any variable names, you know, this one in particular, it only has meanings for humans. We could call it anything we wanted to. We could call it Keanu Reeves. That's really stupid. Why would we make a variable name called Keanu Reeves? But we could do that. And then we would print Keanu. Okay, I can't even spell his name. I'm not going to do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this is saying for every value, for every element in the movies list, print it out. Now, what's different than this, in this, than this? Well, this is going to print each, each movie on its own line, where this printed all the movies in the same line. Maybe that doesn't sound important, but this is the only way that you can actually process that list line by line. Like if it was a list of numbers and you wanted to add the numbers together, or if it, you know, you wanted to, if it was a list of document names and you want to send it all to the printer, you have to use a for loop in order to get those values out. I won't say you have to, but that's the good way to do it. All right, I've added a couple more lines of code, so I'm going to run it again. There we go. So the first time we printed it, it printed it in that format. That's kind of the raw Python format. You usually won't show that to the user, but it's good for us to look at to debug. Then we have the four movies printed out line by line inside of the for loop. So down here, we're going to append a movie. What's our movie list called? It's called movies. So we call movies.append, and let's give it another movie. The Hunger Games Part 12. There we go. Now that added it to the list. So the movie list, at least on my screen, is Age of Ultron, Matrix, Jurassic World, Batman vs. Superman, and The Hunger Games Part 12. I think I'll issue a print statement right there, even though that's not one of the comments, just so that I can see that new list. Well, it's not a new list, but it's the same list with a new item added to the end. All right. Now my list of movies has a fifth item added to it. I should say appended to it rather than added, but added is what we say in colloquial English. Now I want to sort that in alphabetical order. So I'm going to say movies is equal to movies.sort. And then I'm going to print it out again now that it's sorted. So print movies. And it didn't do a lick of good. I broke it. All right. I probably should not make it movies is equal to movies.sort. I should just make it movies.sort. My mistake. And that fixed it. I apologize for making that mistake. If you're, gonna, if you're going to call sort on a list, you give the variable name, you tack on the dot sort, that sorts the list and then it saves the, uh, the sorted list straight back into that same variable. All right, I'm going to take some spaces out, some new lines out of this, make it all fit on one page, or just as much of it as I can. Okay, I forgot a comment here that said make a list of integers called scores. And put some numbers in it. So that's going to look exactly like this statement. Movies is equal to, except you're not going to put quotes around them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that'd be fun, but no, this is just a, a series of numbers, any kind of numbers you want. Just don't make them numbers in order, because later on when we call sort, then it wouldn't be any fun, because the sorted version of it would be just the same as what we already put into it. All right, now I'm not typing anything, because I'm hoping that y'all already have the idea. You know, I could go ahead and do it. Scores is equal to, and when I say integers, that just means whole numbers. That's to separate it from strings. The uh, difference is that a string has quotes around it. All right, you know, 100, whatever my favorite numbers are. All right, now that I've declared the list, I am absolutely sure that y'all can do it all the way down to at least there. Maybe not the last two, unless you remember that from the uh, prior in-class assignment or so, but I know y'all can do all the rest, so I'm going to give you a minute or two or three to do that. So since we didn't reverse the list when it was a list of movies, let's go ahead and show you how to do it here. It's just scores.reverse, parentheses. But not everybody remembered that we needed to store that as a result. And you don't want to store it into a variable named sum because that's the name of the function. If you ever start typing and you're trying to create a variable name but it flags it as purple rather than black or whatever colors you've chosen, that's a bad variable name to use. So instead, I'm going to use, I don't know, total. Total is equal to the sum of all the scores. And let's print that out. No, not the word sum. Now let's be really cool and actually put a description of what we're printing out there. The total of the scores is comma total. Now I didn't say to do that in my comment, but you know, we're printing out a whole bunch of stuff. We may as well start describing what each thing is, is everything that we're printing. Okay, so now to use the sum and the len functions to print the average. Why do we need to know the length of the list? Because if you calculate the average, it's the sum of all the values divided by the number of values in that list. So average is equal, and you'd think that average would just be a, a, you know, a function. And I suppose it might actually be, but I haven't found it yet. So average is equal to the sum of the scores divided by the length of the scores. I'm going to take those extra spaces out. I think they're making it actually harder to read than, than easier. And then just print that average out. Along with sum and length, I always like to demonstrate two more functions, which are min and max. So, I don't know. I can't just call it m for min and max. Well, I guess I could, but okay. Like m is equal to the minimum of the scores. And let's print out that. I'm going to cheat, copy that print line, and paste it so it doesn't take me as long to type it. 
and I'm going to make that say the minimum score is. And then print, whoopsie, come back. There we go. And print out M. I did, but that M was inside a loop. So that M disappears when you're outside of the loop. Very good point. It is okay to reuse variable names as long as you realize that you're completely wiping out what used to be scored, stored in there. And in this case, we're not wiping anything out, but then when I do this, M is equal to max scores, yeah, I have completely wiped out what M used to be. And so it would be better to give these different names. I just didn't come up with a good representation of it, you know, that wasn't an entire word like minimum. And again, the variable name doesn't matter. I could call that one Keanu, if I could spell it, is equal to max scores, and then I would print out the maximum score is Keanu. You know, that's just a variable. It's just a name that I have that I use in order to store the result of that function and then to print it out. But it is very important to watch out to make sure you're not reusing variable names unless you are fully convinced that it's okay to do so. Because if I reuse the movies down here and assign something else to it, I would lose my movies list that I had up at the top. And maybe I'm not done with it. So usually, you don't get to do this, you know. You're not going to write a program and already have the student's test scores all coded in it. Or, you know, Blockbuster, if they still existed. I don't think they do anymore. They do online. Okay. Yesterday. Yeah, or, you know, Redbox doesn't go in and code these values into their program. Instead, they read those values from somewhere, like a database or from a file or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's um, modify this code to read a list of movies from a file. I think I'm just going to start fresh. Do new file and then do save as and call it movies.txt, but make sure you do save as type txt. That was my mistake last time is I didn't change the save as type to txt. So create a blank document, a blank file, do save as, change the save as type to .txt, and then type in file name movies.txt. If you give it a different name, that's cool. It's just that you're going to have to modify your program that way. Now I need to type in some movies. Jaws 8. The really hungry games. Hulk versus Ant-Man. All right, anyways, just make up some movie names, whatever. The Wrath of Kim Kardashian. <laughs> the Matrix. Gotta have the Matrix in there. Star Trek 99. Yeah. Okay. So I put six whole movies in my list. I'm just going to kind of drag going to drag that to the side. I think I'm going to close this April 21. You could keep it open if you wanted to refer to it, but since I'm going to be
hawking all through this. Not necessary. So now I'm going to make a new program. And it's going to open this and it's going to add each element in that list in this file to a list so that we can do things with it so we can sort it, you know, that kind of stuff. So we use the open command. F is equal to open and then we give it a file name. Now it could be a fully qualified file name. You could say D colon backslash, you know, my flash drive slash, you know, whatever. But since this file is in the same directory, we don't need to do anything like that. The file name is a string though. If I left the quotes off, then it would give me an error when I tried to run it. I'm going to call this one movies April 20.py. Now, how do we process a file? We do it the same way that we process a list. What's our keyword? It's not going to be while. It's going to be... That'd be a good one, but for. We're going to use a for loop to iterate through it. But what I want to do is I want to copy every movie out of this list, excuse me, out of this file and put it into a list. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but not terribly so. The first thing you have to do is you create an empty list. So instead of creating a list and then putting some names in it, just do movies is equal to square braces. And the reason we're creating an empty list is now we're going to start processing that file in a for loop, and every line of that file we are going to append to our movies list. Remember when we, we did an append in the last program? Same idea here. So for, I'm going to call it M, for M in movies, But the first thing I want to do is I want to, well, we won't do it, and then we'll come back and we'll fix it. But I'm going to put a little comment here. You don't have to put it here to indicate that we're going to have to go up there and we're going to have to fix something. Oh, now that's really dumb. I've created an empty list, and then I have for M and movies, and that's totally wrong. Delete all that. Okay. Now, for every line of data in F, movies.append that line of data. And then print our movies list out. It's not going to be real pretty because there's something wrong with it. We're going to see these slash ends in there. To remove those slash ends, we're going to have to call the strip function. So I want to make sure that everybody at least gets this far, that they've entered a, that they've entered data and that they've written this little program that creates an empty list, steps through the program, and then prints them out. Now really what I ought to do is I ought to close the movies file after I'm done with it. So I'm going to do f.close parentheses in parentheses. That closes the file so that if a backup program needed to run or we needed to copy it to another directory, we could do so without getting an error. What those slash ends are is those are new line characters. You know, that 0D, 0A we did way back at the beginning of the semester. We want to strip those off, and we, and we use the strip command in order to do that. So when we append line, before we append it, let's do line is equal to line.strip. That takes the spaces off the end and the carriage returns and the line feeds. It takes the slash in off the end of the file. So we just added this line right here. 
Now when you run it, it won't have those slash ends. staring at that. There we go. Now this is a little bit different than that sort function because that sort function we didn't have to use an equal sign and copy it back into itself. But script we have to. I don't have a real solid reason to explain why, why one worked one way and one works the other. Developers of Python decided that um, dot sort will actually change the data but that dot strip just returns a modified copy of the data. And I think the difference is, is that if you're doing something to a string, then it always, you always have to copy the results in with an equal sign. And line is a string because it's a line of data out of the file. assignment that's very similar to this. So when you get home or whenever you're going to do this, don't just do it right now. That's, that's, that makes me feel intimidated when you get the program done before class is done. I'm kidding, but okay. So what, you want, what I want you to do is when you get home, create a file called names.txt. Then put a bunch of names in the file. Whoops. And save it. Remember that when you do a save as, choose document type, choose file types, um, text. Be creative and put like 30 names in there. Then write a program called namereader.py that opens the file, creates an empty list, you could call it names, uses a for loop to append each line in the names file to the names list. Excuse me, I'm just going to say in the file to the names list. Don't forget to use dot strip to remove all the slash ends and then close the file. Once you have that working, there's some changes I want you to make to it. Well, for one thing, we ought to print the file out. We ought, we ought to print the data out. So that's step three. Four is going to be modify the program to sort the names, print them out, to reverse the names, print them out, and then use a for loop to print out the names line by line. So that's pretty similar to what we did today. You'll be able to reference what we did today, you know, 
and knock this one out of the ballpark really easily. So go ahead and upload the script that you have. Well, I guess we created several scripts. Upload both scripts and your names file. Excuse me, your movies.txt file. So, so upload all three things that we did today into the Dropbox. So the last thing I want us to do, don't work on the, on the homework. I mean, yeah, I know you could, you could, you know, kick it out right now. Is I want us to flow chart the movies program we just wrote. So go into Lucid Chart, and we're also going to turn this into the short assignment. Log in. Make a new document. And now comes the eternal struggle of looking at the code and drawing on the flowchart at the same time. But that's a really short little program, so it's not going to be a very long flowchart. What do all my flowcharts start with? I know you know I'm not going to even wait for an answer. Start with the, with the knowable. Then what's our next line? We're creating an empty list. Is that input-output? No, it's not. So we're not going to put it in a parallelogram. We're going to put it in a rectangle, a process box. Movies is equal to square braces. And I'm putting a space between the square braces because otherwise it just looks like a box. Now we have a for loop. The for loop has the same symbol as the while loop in the if statement. And just like a while loop, it's going to have a line that comes back to it. And then it's going to have a line, you know, that goes off to the right and another one that goes straight down. So, for every line in F, I'm even putting the colon there so that if you were going to program from this flowchart, it would be really easy to type. You know what I forgot? I forgot the open statement. I got so in such a hurry to create my list that I forgot to do this. I'm going to need another box that says f is equal to openmovies.txt. Now conceivably you could put that into an input output box. I haven't made a strong decision about if that's the right thing to do. I think I'm going to do that because it is a form of input. No, I'm going to go ahead and put it in a normal process box. So between the start block and the movies block, I need a new one. That's my open statement. And that's going to say F is equal to open. And I'm going to embed a, go to the next line with control enter, movies.txt. I'll come back and I'll draw all these lines. Oh, I can do this right now. I'm going to be sneaky and just draw one line from the start box all the way to the 
for statement and then I'm going to right click on that line and send it to back. That way I don't have to draw a line between each box. Just kind of a cheaty thing to do. Okay, now what's inside my for loop? I'm going to need to go off to the right and have these two commands. So the first thing I have to do is I have to remove that slash in from the data. So line is equal to line dot strip. And now that I have that line and I've, and I've cleaned it up, I've removed the slash in, we're going to append it to our list. Movies.append parentheses line. And then since we're done with our for loop, the line, the line has to go back up to the for statement, just like in a while loop. When you're done with your while loop, when you stop indenting, the line goes back up to your while statement. Now that line going through um, that block is kind of tacky, so I'm going to try to move that line so that it comes out of the side. There we go. I could also make it a right angle and you know, all that, but I'm not going to mess with it too much. All right, after we have stripped our line and added it to our movies list, we have two more statements, print movies and then close. Now print movies, we are gonna put in a tilted box because it's, you know, we're calling that input output. So there we go. Print the movies list. quotes in it. I don't know why I was adding quotes. If I wanted to see the word movies, it'd be a great idea to put quotes around it. That's not what I want. And then I want to close the file, and then I need a stop oval at the very bottom. So that's my flow chart. I'm not sure how much luck I would get have in squeezing it all down so that it would fit on one page for y'all to see. I could make some effort at that, but I'm really not going to have too much luck doing that. I just about did. I'm going to move the stop command off to the side. This is stupid programming, but just so that you can see everything on the screen. Put your stop oval underneath it, not up to the side like that. So to save my document, I'm going to go to File, Download As. I want it to be a PDF. Sometimes it asks for a name, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to call it Movies Flowchart. And I actually haven't saved the document itself. I just downloaded it, but I never saved it. So I need to come up here and do a file save. And I'll call it Movies Flowchart. And then upload the flowchart into the daily assignment box, the in-class assignment box. I'm going to wander around, make sure everybody gets it downloaded, that you've 
finished your flowchart and then we'll be done for the day.